Hey guys, today's video is going to be about Zephyr 7b beta and these open source models or the open source LLMs that I'm covering these days, it's very important because the open source LLMs are all the rage at the moment because they're almost catching up with ChatGPT and you can host these for free and they're open source so, so you know that they're not using your data to do anything shady and your data stays with you when you run these on the cloud. So if you have a use case like that, oh, these open source LLMs are the best way to go. Now the 7B, right, the, the reason we're covering this is because the 7B models are getting really, really good now, right? So earlier we used to have the 40B models and then there are even uh, models like the Falcon 180B. So you, you don't, you, you had to need like a lot of parameters earlier to be able to catch up with uh, OpenAI. Uh, but now, uh, even though this doesn't really catch up with OpenAI, but this can do a lot of tasks that OpenAI does. Uh, with just 7b uh, parameters and that means that the model is smaller you can host it much easily you don't need, need a lot of uh, gpu computation now in a previous video we checked out the 3b dolly uh, llm and this is obviously uh, much bigger and much better than that and also because this is a fine-tuned version of mistral ai I mean, mistral 7b is a very popular ai model that i will be showing you in one of the uh, the next upcoming videos but then this is a fine-tuned version, so this is like slightly better for specific use cases. And uh, you can look at the performance, and it's uh, is the highest ranked 7B chat model right now on MT Bench and Alpaca Eval. So that means it's really, really good. <clears throat> and here is what uh, it can do, right? So it can it's really good at humanities, writing, role play, STEM, extraction, not that great at coding, math, and reasoning. So uh, anytime you're picking up uh, an LLM, you need to be sure what your use case is and then check out what that specific LLM is good for. For example, if, if my use case was coding, I wouldn't be using this. Or if my use case was math or reasoning, I definitely wouldn't be using this LLM. Uh, but for, for let's, let's imagine that our use case is uh, something related to text, right? For example, in this project, today's project, we'll be building a, um, a bot that talks to you like a pirate. Like, uh, so you tell it that, hey, you are a pirate and you'll always reply in that sort of a language. And that's what today's application will do. Now, whenever you look at the models, you need to go to Hugging Face. Uh, mostly you'll find a version of the open source LLM on Hugging Face. You can read about it, you can check it out. And then you usually use it on your local machine using any of the frameworks that are available to us right now, like Olama, private GPT, private LLM, all of those which I will be covering in uh, the future videos uh, but the the easiest way that i think um, i think the easiest way is using google colab and what i've done for you in this video is i've created this google colab sheet for you and all you have to do is you just have to click on it or the link in the description i'll put the link in the description click on it create your own copy from it and then you're good to go you just have to come here and run uh, the code one by one that's all you have to do. okay anyways i won't run this now uh, because i've already i've already run it so uh, what I'll do is I'll actually take you through the uh, entire code line by line. Okay. So the first step, the first stage, the first line uh, is is installing the transformers library. Okay. And then we're installing the Axlet library. So what does that mean? So let me show you. So and I've and I've shown th this to you in the Dolly LLB, uh, the Dolly, uh, sorry, uh, 3B video as well. But I'll show it to you right now here as well, which is the transformers. Uh, it provides a simple interface to work with a wide range of uh, pre-trained language models. So we'll use this to load and interact with Dolly. Uh, in our case now, it will be the Zephyr 7B model, okay? So that's why we're getting the Transformers library from Hugging Face because it just helps us to work with these pre-trained language models much easily. So it'll help us to load and interact with the model, okay? The Accelerate uh, library that we're using here is developed by Hugging Face again, and it's designed to optimize the training and inference performance of machine learning models, particularly on GPUs. Now, the important thing to remember here is that I am using the T4 GPU to be able to work with this. And you, all you have to do is just go ahead and click on all these cells to run. Some of these cells will take time as you see this particular cell, which I'll tell you about the pipeline generation that will take a long time to build, but that's completely all right. Uh, I'm just going to take you through the code anyways right now. So you, at least you understand everything that's going on here. Now, the next thing that we'll be using is Torch. So if I go here, I open my code. In this cell, we have done Transformers and Accelerate. In the next, very next cell, we get Torch. And then we get Pipeline from Transformers. So we imported Transformers just in the previous cell. And now we're getting something called this Pipeline module from Transformers library. And we're also importing the Torch 
module. Uh, let's see what it does. The torch is used to handle tensor operations and potentially manage the device. So for example, the CPU or GPU on which the computations will be take, taking place, it will do all that for us. And the pipeline module is uh, in the transformers library allows us to quickly set up pipelines for common NLP tasks such as text generation and text classification. Now in, in today's video, our challenge is going to be about text generation. And that's why we are using pipeline to help, help set up a pipeline. Now I'll show you the next line of code, which is this pipe is equal to pipeline. So here we're creating the pipeline that we just imported here and pipeline. This is the task. So we have to specify the task that we're using, which is text generation in our case. And then you have the model. The model is hugging face uh, Zephyr 7B beta. That's the one we're using. And then we're using torch B float 16 and device map auto. Now let's see what that means. Okay. Uh, so torch D type torch uh, B float 16 is brain floating point 16 is a floating point format that provides more precision and uh, that than um, uh, half precision sorry more precision than 16 bit half precision floating point format yeah that's not important what's important is it's often used to speed up computations on hardware that supports it okay so that's uh, that's what you need to remember and then we have the device map auto this last line which is basically saying that uh, when, when it's set to auto, the pipeline automatically selects the appropriate device based on the availability of GPU. So if the GPU is available, it will select that. Or if the CPU is available, it will select that based on that. And this one line that we had in the Dolly 3B, we don't have it anymore, which is uh, trusting the, the code because earlier it was via Databricks that we were using. Now we don't have to do that. So uh, now we've created the pipeline using import pipeline and then what we do is we create the messages. So the first is role, which is you are a friendly chatbot who always responds in the style of a pirate. So we're giving it a role playing, which I showed you here. Uh, it's pretty good at role playing, right? So that's the, uh, that's the angle that I'm taking up. Now you could take up any of these other angles as well. So like, for example, you can ask, ask it to write a nice poem or, or write a nice uh, article or even the preface of a book. Uh, you can ask it to do a little bit of philosophy probably. With humanities, uh, with role playing, uh, I'm going to ask it to respond in the style of a pirate, right? So this actually, this file that I have here is the uh, is the Dolly 3B that we just covered. If you have not seen that video, I uh, recommend you go and check that out as well. You, you'll that, that that ways you'll know how to work with multiple different types of LLMs depending on your use case. And uh, then here's the question: How many helicopters can a human human uh, eat in one sitting? So we are telling the system that hey this is how you're supposed to behave and the user is going to ask this so the answer we're expecting is for this uh, is for this question but in the style of a pirate that's the answer we're expecting okay and finally what we do is we say pipe.tokenizer.apply chat template and we pass the messages here and tokenize false and add generation prompt is equal to true and then we print print out the prompt so so to understand this what we need to do is uh, to understand where this pipe is coming from. So pipe, if you remember, is our pipeline. And pipeline has this function, which is apply chat template. So we'll get uh, everything in a particular template, which is passing the messages that we have here, uh, which has the role and content. Okay, sorry, role and content. And then you're saying you don't have to uh, tokenize all the messages separately. And then you're saying add generation prompt. So you'll add the generation prompt, so true. Uh, and this is the prompt, obviously, uh, that you have now. And we'll print, print it out, which is, uh, how many helicopters can a human back, human eat in one sitting and then finally you get the output so the output to get the output you have you use your pipeline which is pipe you send it the prompt you tell it that how many tokens do you want to end, end up using now you don't want to have like thousand or two thousand tokens because that takes a long long time for the ai to respond with using those many tokens and it also depends on how many tokens uh, or the context window of the llm so many llms they don't have a huge context window so they're not able to work with a uh, very uh, large number of tokens. So you need to be mindful of that as well and accordingly put a right uh, number of tokens. And then you put in the temperature. So temperature is between zero and one. So it's closer to one. That means the, there will be a lot of ambiguity in the, in the response. And then you have top K and top P. So to explain about top K and top P, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift to my uh, whimsical board. So top K sampling, top K sampling involves restricting the vocabulary of tokens considered during text generation to the top k most likely tokens at each step. So this means that the lower values of top k results in more diverse but potentially less coherent text 
while higher values tend to produce more conservative and coherent outputs. So what we have done is we have kept it as 50 like in the middle somewhere and setting top k to a higher value will make the model more deterministic. So this is uh, like temperature like if you have uh, a higher temperature from between 0 and 1 if you it is closer to 1 it is more uh, it is less deterministic and uh, and more ambiguous and if it is closer to 0 it is more deterministic. It is very similar here so you select a higher value to make the model more deterministic. Uh, so, it is the opposite of temperature basically, it will have fewer tokens to choose from. And then you have uh, top p or nucleus sampling. So, this in this case the higher values of top p result in a larger set of tokens considered for sampling potentially leading to more diverse outputs. Uh, and that is what we have, cho cho we have chosen a higher number here 0 0.95 and, um, and the lower values of top p result in a smaller number of set of tokens considered leading to more deterministic but potentially less uh, diverse outputs. So that is what we are doing here, we are using uh, top k, uh, top p and temperature all three to basically say that we want uh, more diverse and ambiguous kind of outputs alright. So uh, once you um, <coughs> pass the prompt there, so this is the prompt from for the system which is uh, you always res respond in the style of a pirate and for from the user it is how many helicopters can a human being eat in one sitting. The assistant is now talking in the language of a pirate which is Mihati is this a mighty peculiar question you, you'll be asking now I'm no expert on human anatomy so it's kind of funny right so if you wanted to be like funny wanted to be uh, wanted to have a little bit of creative freedom as you call it you you'll have to increase the temperature you'll have to uh, give it uh, you'll have to put in the fields for top k and top top e needs to be high as well. So uh, it's saying what well, I can tell you the answer is none, helicopters are not food, they are they're machines used for transport and other purposes, humans consume food uh, to provide their bodies with the nutrients they need to survive, I hope this helps you understand the difference, <laughs> right. So uh, not only does it understand the input, it understands what to reply but also uh, it can change it to match that of a pirate. So if you are not amazed by this technology and the, the very fact that you are running it in such less uh, competition power and you don't need much to, to run it, you just need like a few lines of code, uh, I mean like you have to really appreciate uh, like where open source LLMs have reached already. And uh, my job is to keep showing you such awesome uh, examples and content. So make sure you subscribe because I'll be, I'll be showing you many different uh, frameworks like Olama, like I said, private GPT, private LLM, all of those to help you uh, work with these models privately and then I'll show you Streamlit as well to work. Uh, to, to build quick front, front ends for these kind of applications and Gradio uh, as well and then I will show you and I will we'll cover more LLMs like these. Now I am building this series called the AI projects, I might call it AI and LLM projects where I will add all of these videos that I am making the Dolly video, the Zephyr video and so on uh, and uh, if you are new to this channel you must know that there is a 50 Rust project playlist, there is a 53 Killer Golang projects playlist where, where the projects are arranged in the increasing level of difficulty so you will learn a lot if you go through these and make sure you share it with your friends who are learning Golang and Rust. Then I have a technology architect course on the channel and then I have the ultimate system design course so I, and I keep adding videos to it they are not complete yet I keep adding videos to these ones. Uh, these are kind, these are linked to each other but the Rust and Golang ones they are not linked to each other they are all uh, like an anthology right different videos different projects each so they are not linked so you can pick up any of these projects and watch and build along depending on your experience level but if you are new you will start at the beginning okay so thank you so much for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video do share do do comment and do subscribe